Okay, so we showed you how to uh, import a texture or, uh, you know, uh, an image, images, different types of images, like if, for instance, a color map, a normal map, and applying them to uh, a uh, non-textured item inside a 3D coat. So once again, you can bring in uh, literally textures that you've made in other sources as a template or something at least to build off of, to, to create a base texture, and then you could further manipulate it and then create your own new image maps from here. So say, okay, now I've done that. Now there's there's a multitude of, or there's a couple ways that we could get these textures back out again. Say I want to export this new uh, this new modified texture to a piece of software like Lightwave or any other 3D program because I want to do some animating and rendering or whatever it is I want to do. Um, you could go over to File and go to Export Model. Now, generally, this would be the methodology uh, if you did not, say, have... Um, if your original model didn't have a UV map on it when it came in. Because when you go Export Model, what it does is, notice that it says, the little thing, that, the little window pops up, says export the current object with textures. So what you're doing is you're saving out a completely new model along with the textures. And so this is great if you've created the UV map inside of 3D Coat. But if you have already have a model, the, the exact model, with a UV map already on it, there's no point in exporting out a new uh, model in most cases unless you've modified or edited the UV map inside of 3D Coat, which is another thing that you can do as well. Uh, we won't actually show that, but I'm just sort of giving you examples of sort of the pipeline that you can work with. So just as when we were importing uh, textures to use as a base texture or a starter texture, under the textures panel, it, remember how I think I said I showed you that where where you could import right here diffuse map. Well, underneath it there is export. So the same thing, I can export this map. Okay, I can export this color map. I can export a normal map. I can export a uh, sorry a uh, a displacement map as well. Okay, so <clears throat> with that being said, and you could do them individually. So say I updated this this uh, this surface, I could just keep saving out uh, all the updated maps until okay, does that look good? Does that look good? And keep and just have it re-imported into another piece of software instead of I could like a, basically imp I could save out each map individually, whereas if I go to export model, it will, like I said, I'll have to save out a new model file plus all the textures that I have selected. So what this, what the textures panel does, the export uh, textures under export, it allows me to individually save out uh, the different maps without saving out another object file. So, okay, so what I want to do now is since, because in uh, Modeler, I already have uh, a UV map on my ball, and I just want to apply it to this exact same ball that we modeled in UV Unwrapped. So, let's go to Textures, let's go to Export, let's go Diffuse Map. And I can save this out as, you know, whatever I want. Let's go, we can go with a JPEG. And let's call this ball color sorry ball color map or it's you know diffuse map whatever same thing fill in the empty parts of the texture sure why not okay. So if we go over to Modeler, I can go under Surface, Texture, 
UV. Go to unwrap because that's the name that uh, the AB, uh, ABF UV unwrapping tool uh, uh, gave the UV map. Uh, let's click on ball color. You can see it right there. And click OK. And you can see that we have our Sorry, we can see that we have our ball image here, and let's take it just to put it in a texture mode. Okay, so you can see the painting we did. I paint. I went offline and I painted out the grass. I didn't do a, a complete job, uh, just because it's. I mean, it's just a it's a ball with some dirt, <laughs> some dirt cracks on it, uh, but. Uh, just enough to show you that I, I tried to basically turn it into a seamless texture going throughout throughout the ball. Now in Modeler, we can't really view normal maps or displacement maps. So what we'll do at this point is we're going to... Let's actually save this guy. Uh, let's, let's go switch to... Sorry, send object to Layout. Okay, and there we are. Let's go surface editor. Let's go smoothing. I'll smooth out that ball. Okay, I'm just gonna move this out of the way. Hit Y for rotate, and maybe I might rotate the ball a little bit. Oops. Undo. I'm just gonna grab. Okay, that's perfect. And we'll just save this scene out because we're just going to set this up. And we'll call this Ball Setup Scene. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to save out a normal map because that hasn't happened yet. So let me go to, um, sorry, back to 3D Coat. And so, so once again, notice that the ball is flat, okay? We don't see any bumpies on it because we haven't exported the uh, normal map. So you can see the bumpies here because there is a normal map physically applied. Um, so go to textures, export, and go to, we're going to go normal map, uh, tangent space, low poly mesh, and let's go PNG, and we'll call this ball normal. Fill in empty texture, sure, why not? Fill in empty parts of texture, okay. So let's go back to layout. Let's go under surface. Uh, click on default, because that's the surface name. We didn't give it, actually give it a name. Let's go under edit nodes. Okay, and We just need to find normal, normal map. We're going to plug this into normal and double click to open up our, our uh, image, uh, our image editor here for the normal map input for our node. And let's go load image. And that's the ball normal map right here. Okay, and let's go mapping, select UV map, and let's select unwrap, which was the name of the UV map, and let's see if 
that's working. Oh, and click the check mark beside so edit nodes. And VPR, we'll go into VPR mode so we can see the normal map. And camera, T for move. Okay, and object, I'm going to deselect pitch and bank, and I'm just going to rotate this. So you can see the normal map um, coming through, and actually I'm going to go camera, T for move, I'm going to just move this over so we can look at our node editor simultaneously. Let's uh, size down our screen just so we can get we can see what we're looking at. And double click on the uh, properties for the normal map input. And we've got amplitude. Let's try 300. And you can see that the normal map has become um, a little bit more dense. So you can actually keep increasing the strength of the normal map. It doesn't really look all that great <laughs> going up too high. Um, at 100%, that's supposed to be what we're looking at um, inside of, sorry, inside of a 3D coat, the same, the same amount. Now you could dial that down if you don't like like the way it looks okay amplitude we're going down to uh, 24 percent okay so if it doesn't look if you feel that it doesn't look the same way as it did inside of um, 3d coat once again through the node editor under amplitude you can change the strength. And this actually does look a little bit too much. This doesn't look like what we're seeing in, uh, in 3D code. It looks like it is actually is too much. So, whoops, uh, at 100%. Eh, I think maybe looks a little bit too dark. I think let's go 50. That might be a little closer. But once again, the great part about um most 3D programs you can adjust the strength of uh the actual uh sorry the actual normal map that was created in 3D code so if for some reason it doesn't come through the way you want you once again have settings that you can play with to uh to make sure that you know the strength is where you need it now the other the other great part about it is that say your maybe for instance your lighting changed and for some reason the shadows were a little odd but depending on where it is in the scene maybe it might look this might look okay for example at 50 percent um, at one part of your scene where the objects in a different place or with a different lighting situation the lights might be moving as well it might not look right, say, at the end of your animation. So right now, pretend it's at frame zero. It looks fabulous. Well, you also can open up the um, graph editor, okay, and a, using a time envelope, and you could actually change the strength of the actual uh, normal map depending on where you are and what part of your scene. So you can interactively adjust the strength of it uh, based on uh, the situation. Now, another interesting thing that you can do, even though one might think, well, this is sculpted, um, this is, uh, these are sculpted bumps, you know, uh, you know, you, you can't animate this. Well, what if you made, what if this was like a chunk of cracked meat or something, like a big giant flesh ball, and it's you want to make it look like it's pulsating. Well, so even if there was, 
so so say you intentionally wanted to make it look different in each scene. I was giving you an example where you could say um, keep adjusting it on a uh, on a you know on a, adjusting it in real time in case for some reason the lighting change or the camera angle changed and then it didn't look right. That you could change the way these bumps look and try to make it look consistent. Well, I'm kind of going the other way with this example, whereas I'm saying that if you wanted these these bumps to kind of look like they're they're pulsating, like the ball is actually alive and it's, you know, like I said, if this was like some oozing flesh ball and, uh, you know, who knows in this situation, you know, you could have painted the cracks red and make it look kind of bloody and chunky looking and, you know, you could have painted a little bit of specular to make it look kind of wet and soggy and juicy and once again, the the, this could be like cracked flesh, and you could have it sort of pulsating. Let's uh, hit shift to turn that off. You could uh, make it look like the uh, these edges here around the cracks are kind of pulsating to sort of help, like I said, help it along to make it look like it's it's alive, you know, along with other rigging functions. But you could literally animate the image map based off of like literally intensity which in this case they're calling it amplitude so uh so anyways let's uh put this back to 50 okay so we're going to stop here and uh we will be back in a moment